These two devices are more similar than you think. They're both 10.3 inches, they both have very unique styluses, and they both have proprietary computer software that makes it very difficult to sideload in your own content. You have to have both of these plugged into your computer, you have to have the web browser open for a one-time passcode on the Remarkable, you can only sideload in PDFs on the Sony. They're very difficult to work with, but once you're in them, they have some of the best note-taking capabilities and feel than any devices currently on the market. The Remarkable 2 is remarkable, but the pen isn't. It feels great, it's weighted alright, but it doesn't have an eraser, it doesn't have any side buttons, it, and they actually got rid of that canister at the back that hid all of your nibs. It's actually pretty underwhelming, the pen. It does offer a decent writing experience, and it has tilt, but so did the Remarkable 1 pen. If you spend 70 extra dollars, you get this one, in which case it's a little heavier, it's black, the coarseness has gone up a little bit, and you get an eraser on the back, but you still don't get that canister of nibs, you still don't have any buttons, and a lot of people feel that it's not really worth the upgrade. The Sony pen, although almost four years old at this point, is still one of the best pens on the market. The carbon tip is next to none, it's completely made out of metal, it has a magnet snap on the side with a guide rail. The Remarkable has a magnet snap too, but it doesn't have a guide rail, so sometimes it doesn't stick very well. And you get two buttons on here, which is twice the amount of buttons on every other manufacturer. Uh, you get the eraser and you get a highlight button. You also get a stylus loop and yes, you do need to charge this device, but the battery is so small inside that you charge it within a few minutes and it just works for months. The similarities continue with the fact that neither of them have any really home screens. The home screen is just a list of whatever you have on your device. You only get some extra options when you click the menu or the button at the top respectively. You have My Files, Notebook, PDFs, eBooks, and Favorite, along with Grid, some settings, etc. And here you get more of the same. You have your documents, a couple folders which basically is just a bunch of your PDFs because this only runs one format, Create a Note, All Notes, and Settings. If you want to see the individual reviews on both of these, youtube.com slash goodereader is where you can see that. As well as if you want to see individual note-taking experiences on both of these, we have those on our channel as well. The Remarkable has a little wheel that opens up and closes the elements. You have seven different markers along with pencil, and the pencil is actually cool because it looks like a pencil, and you can actually do shading if you tilt the pen, which is really cool because basically no other device on the market does that. The paintbrush, for example, has pressure sensitivity and color choices, so you can see all this on the individual writing experiences, but needless to say, you do have a lot of different options. You have three different colors. White is basically just an eraser, and you do have the erase function. The erase function is kind of not as extensive as you would think, more so to the point that when you get the unit, you actually don't even have an eraser on the pen. You actually have to spend an extra $70 to get the eraser and you don't even get any additional buttons or anything like that otherwise you will have to choose eraser erase selection like so or use the back of the more expensive pen in which case it's just a scrub it's not a stroke eraser so you never actually get the ability to do stroke eraser or you can erase all once you're done drawing something, you can use the Area Select tool, and this is good for saving something very technical that maybe had taken you a long time. Not as amazing and technical as my farmhouse here, but if you've done something a little bit uh, lesser. So you can cut and you can copy if you want to stamp. You can stamp where you want it, and once you're done, you just click out, and you can actually clear the clipboard of anything you might have saved to your clipboard. Now, you don't have pinch and zoom or anything like that, so you you will have to use the zoom in, zoom out, or selector area, in which case you do a massive zoom in. From here though, you can actually get a lot more detailed once you're in this level. For example, if I use the mechanical pencil, I can get these nice little strokes like that, and then I can just zoom out all the way back to my 100% or I can use the little mini map on there and you can see I've achieved a whole bunch of fine lines that I would not have been able to achieve otherwise. 
The magic never stops on the Remarkable 2 because you can actually add layers. So for example, if we add a layer and then we choose something like say the paintbrush with a thick line in black. Now you might be thinking, oh no, you're destroying your masterpiece and it really surely looks like that. But even if I were to use the eraser selection tool like that, you're actually only affecting the topmost layer and the bottom layer, your base layer is completely untouched. You can move these in priority up or down or you can delete the layers entirely, add as many as you want, and you get your own Photoshop on the go system with the Remarkable 2. Quite possibly the biggest draw of this device is the handwriting recognition. So basically it converts to text and send. So you can see I've written something on the screen. I click convert to text and send and it immediately changes everything I've written into text and I can email it to myself. Not only that, I can actually go back and you can see a bunch of things I've written. I can actually backtrack and backlog the pages in which I want to convert. For example, this one, click convert and it's actually going to add the previous page where I wrote hello and then I can send it via email to myself. So that's really cool because even if there's things you've written months or even years ago on your Remarkable 1, you simply click it and away it goes. Compared to the Remarkable 2, the Sony DPT-CP1 seems very bare bones, and it is. So you have the ability to draw, but they have a massive advantage over the Remarkable 2 in which that is you can actually press and hold the button closest to the nib and it erases the screen. So if I've drawn something like that and I've done all these lines, you can just go ahead and say, no, I want to get rid of that, that and that. It's very quick. It's very seamless. You don't have to even turn the pen around. You don't have to select any eraser tool. It's very quick and it's unfortunate that even when you spend an extra $70 on the advanced pen marker plus, you don't get that feature, which is a little bit of a letdown. But on the flip side, the Sony has a lot of letdowns because there's no pressure sensitivity. So you actually have to choose your line thickness like so. But it does have something really cool. It has blue and red. And because this was originally released as a professional item, you have blue and red primarily as your selector. So if you want to grade papers like that, you go and X the pages out. Or you want to sign important documents on the bottom of the page like that. When you export all that, all that will be in blue and red respectively. On the screen, it's black and gray. So you do still get the black and gray that the Remarkable 2 has. You have eraser size, but it doesn't really matter too much because your eraser is pretty much uh, relies on how you move the pen around. Now clicking the zoom in tool, you can tap or circle the area in which to zoom just like you can on the Remarkable 2. So we'll circle that like that. And then we have our pen, so we make our very fine lines like so and we exit all the same just like the Remarkable did. Now we have our super detailed stuff that we weren't able to achieve otherwise. The limitations continue with the Sony when it comes to area selection. So although it is very quick to select it and it moves around very quickly, uh, you actually have a little bit of a downside because even if I click done and I wanna put it there, I have to go back into it if I want to copy or cut it. So I'll go into it again like so, and then I can cut it, and then I can go up here to the pasteboard, tap where I want to paste it, and I'm done. Now it's just a couple extra steps. It works just fine. It's just, it's a little bit more that you have to do to get the same result, really. Something the Sony can do that the Remarkable cannot is display documents side by side. And what it actually does is it splits the entire UI into two parts. It doesn't duplicate the image. You can actually click on here and choose anything you want. For example, the basic operation guide, which is a PDF. I can have it on here and I can have my notepad open here. And this is very, very useful if you had technical documents, medical documents, etc. on this side. So you can still take notes and you can take notes on this side. Another advantage of the Sony is that you actually have a highlight button in which case you can just press it and you can highlight over any text you want up to 11 times and it just keeps getting darker and darker until the point where it won't let you anymore because you can't see what you're highlighting. But this is very good because even on side loaded content the highlight basically highlights any text on the screen. They both run PDFs and we're not going to dwell on this too much. Yes, you can just start writing right away on both of these guys, but there isn't much more to say because whether you're on the Remarkable or whether you're on the Sony, the UI elements on the top and the side respectively are the exact same across the board. Whether you're in an ebook, a PDF, a note taking, your textbook, it's all the same. So 
it's good and bad. It's it's bad that they don't add anything new and give you any additional function, but it is good because they blanket the OS elements so that you are always familiar no matter what application you're on. These devices are the same in a lot of ways and they're different in a lot of ways. The Remarkable is more refined, it's obviously brand new and it has a lot more functionality, but the Sony has documents side by side, the pen is way better and it's a better writing experience. The feel of the Sony with the carbon tip on the screen is a lot more rough and rigid and you get that coarseness that you're just lacking on the Remarkable. The Remarkable has it and it's better than a lot of other manufacturers, but the Sony time and time again is just with stood the test of time. Their stylus is next to none and the nibs are fantastic. They do wear down quickly but with that you get the best writing experience in the game. If you guys want to see more on this hit up youtube.com slash goodyreader and for a comparison between the DPT CP1 and the Remarkable 2 this is Peter.